last time we had talked about magnetic dipoles. And we said that a current loop is a magnetic dipole. So if you have a loop of current, I'll draw it this way where this is the axis going through the loop and the loop is such that the conventional current is coming out towards us at the top and we'll draw it so the conventional current is going into the board at the bottom of this loop. Then this produces a dipole pattern of magnetic field and the direction is going to be this way. So along the axis, we get the field pointing that way. On the perpendicular axis, just field points in the opposite direction. And then it kind of curls around as you go to other observation locations. And, um, and so this is a pattern you should just recognize and know that current loop produces a dipole field. And you should be able to work out the direction. It's, surprise, surprise, another right-hand rule, right, where you can say that if you, well, a couple different ways. You, if you can figure out the direction of the magnetic field at the center of the loop, then you know it everywhere along that center line axis, okay? And so you can do that whatever way you like. But another rule that actually works, if you want to memorize another one, is that if you curl the fingers around in the direction of the current, the thumb points in the direction of the field through the center, okay? But if, if you could also say, well, if I look at it edge head on, we could use the usual cross product and say that if the current's going like that, and I want to find the direction of the, the magnetic field at the center, then again, I cross delta, or I delta L cross R hat, thumb points out, and once you have the field in the center, you know the, f the field direction everywhere along that center line axis for a dipole. It just works out that way. Okay. Question? Okay. So, so we worked this out. We found a um, formula for this. So the magnetic field of a loop on, we're talking about on that center axis, okay, on the axis that goes through the center of the loop. And that magnitude was mu naught over 4 pi, 2 times the current in the loop times pi r squared over z squared plus r squared to the 3 halves. And if the z, the z being this distance, right, the z being the distance from the center to some observation location along that center line. And if z is much greater than the radius of the loop, then this simplifies to mu naught over 4 pi. And we have 2 times the current times pi r squared over the distance cubed. Okay, so we get a, a 1 over distance cubed dependence it's a dipole, okay, just like we saw for electric dipoles or one over distance cube dependence. Uh, we also introduced at the very end last time magnetic dipole moment. We use the symbol mu, Greek letter mu, without the little sub zero, okay, so it's a different quantity. And it's defined to be for a single loop just the current times the area. And so for, for a circular loop, the area is pi r squared. So we could write, rewrite this as mu naught over 4 pi 2 mu over z cubed, just combining the current and the area into a single quantity. Uh, one thing you may run into is how do you deal with a situation where you have a coil? of wire. And so let's say we have a wire that's wrapped around. I'm going to draw it in perspective again. So 
something like this. We have some number of turns of wire that are kind of wrapped around. You could have it, let's see, how do I want to draw this? Coming out like this at the bottom and then going like that. So let's say, so you have a circuit hooked up and these are wires that are going to a battery, for example. I won't draw the battery. But conventional current, capital I, is going this way and so it wraps around and so again, let's draw capital I coming out at the top and going into the board at the bottom, so it's sort of coming up out and over. And something like that, right? And so here's our z-axis again, and we want to find magnetic field at some location out here. And we'll say, just to make it more concrete, the radius is something like two centimeters. And the distance from the center of the coil to the observation location is, say, 55 centimeters. Well, how do you deal with this? Well, let's say we know the number of turns of wire. Let's say the number of turns is something, say, 30. Uh, we want to find the net magnetic field here. What do we do? Add them up. Okay, so we add up all the turns. What if I say, okay, these individual loops of wire are all at different distances away from the, uh, from the observation location, but let's say the thickness of this coil is small. Okay, so they're all approximately, roughly on average, 55 centimeters away from, from the observation location. So it's just like having 30 loops all at the same location, all have the same current running through them, all have the same radius. So we can just say that the net magnetic field here, so B net, of course, is going to point in the same direction, is just going to be N times the magnetic field of a single loop. Okay? So it's just a simple approximation. It's not going to be exact because some loops are closer, some are farther away, but on average, as long as the coil isn't real long compared to the distance uh, to the observation location, it's a good, decent enough approximation. We can then write mu naught over 4 pi. We have n times this. 2 times i times pi r squared over z cubed. And if we knew the current, we could... Well, what is the current? Well, um, I don't know, 2 amps or something like that. I won't work it out, but it, if you knew everything, you could then plug this in, right? And, they, and we're using this approximation. We're saying that, okay, we have 2 centimeters here, 55 centimeters here. The distance z is big compared to the radius, okay? It's, it's big enough. And so we can just use the, uh, the uh, dipole approximation. Plug it in, and you get the net magnetic field. One thing that's sometimes done is that number n. So we can say that you know, it's either n times the magnetic field due to one coil, or you can think of it as 2 times the quantity n times i times pi r squared over z cubed. Same thing, I'm just bringing the n inside. This quantity is now the dipole moment, magnetic dipole moment of the entire coil, okay? So it's N times I times A for where I is the current through one loop and the area is the area of one loop, okay? So if you want the total dipole moment of the entire coil, it's not just the dipole moment of one loop, it's the entire, it's the dipole moment of all those loops put together, okay? so. Something you may run into. Okay. Um, so there's that. Okay. And that's pretty much all I'll say about just loops of current. 